got together with a bass player, um, a guy called Paul Routledge at the time. Um, that was in 66. He didn't stay that long because he wanted to go back to art college. And so we needed a bass player. Um, we thought about it for a while, but I'd previously been for an audition for a band called The Sin um, back in those days. And I'd met up with uh, Chris Squire, the bassist of The Sin. And uh, we called, we called um, Chris, and he came down, played with us, liked what we were doing immediately. Um, he called uh, Peter Banks, who he was in The Sin with previously. And uh, that's how we started, three or four of us with Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. Early in 68, we then met up with John Anderson, and uh, he joined the band. And uh, we had some great stuff going, some really nice sounds, um, beautiful, beautiful um, guitar, bass, uh, the drums were great, they were just fantastic. But what we were missing were the harmonies, and I think John Anderson, when he came in, that's what he brought to the, to the group. Um, the, 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 the listenability, if you like, of um, vocal harmonies. And it, it, it took off from a musical standpoint. But you know, we were, <laughs> we were uh, it seemed like we were practicing 24-7. It was, it was hard. That seemed to be all we were doing all of the time. And uh, that's when the band decided to get a little bit fragmented. And uh, I left first and Clive left just after that. And it was in um, August, I think I left in June. And then in August of that year, uh, the band changed their name to Yes because they wanted a much shorter name after having gone through the nightmare of having to repeat Mabel Greer's toy shop every five minutes. <laughs> Won't you look down to the ground? Won't you look 